So Paramount had a huge challenge when they decided to make Top Gun. Real life air to air combat doesn't lend itself to the silver screen in that it's super technical, very chaotic, and generally takes place at ranges that prevent two jets from being in the same frame at the same time. So of course, writers Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. and the late great director Tony Scott had to take some liberties to make the dynamic world of fighter aviation into something that might entertain moviegoers. But even allowing for that, Top Gun has a bunch of cringeworthy errors that make it as much a cartoon as a tribute to fighter aviation. So here are 13 more errors in addition to the 21 we teed up in a previous episode. As I warned before, after looking at these, you may never watch the movie the same way again. But before I get to those, if you're a first-time viewer, ring the bell and subscribe. Okay, here we go. At time 4.23... The CATSI controller is sweating, which is off because those spaces on the ship are kept uncomfortably cold to protect the electronics. At time 10.58, in what is possibly the most egregious error, Maverick crosses the ramp with his hook down, and then a second later he has the hook up. Then he pulls the throttles aft to power the airplane up to go around, which reduces engine power as somebody randomly screams, Cougar! over the radio, and then in the next shot he's in full afterburner with the hook back down. Time 1419. The bald guy, who, as we discussed before, is either the ship's captain, the CAG, or the squadron skipper, says, with a history of high-speed passes over five air-controlled towers. So I'm not sure what those are, but they must be different than ground or water-controlled towers. Time 1659. There is no Santa Claus or Easter Bunny, and there is no Top Gun trophy. At time 1746... Slider's a lieutenant junior grade, an O2, that's two junior for a Top Gun slot. At time 2637, Charlie briefs, the MiG-28 does have a problem with his inverted flight tanks. So I guess those are different than upright flight tanks. And that seems like a very complicated fuel system for an airplane to have. 2654, anybody who showed up to a flight brief wearing a cowboy hat would have their wings pulled on the spot. Time 3051, Gooch says, watch the mountains. Words never spoken during an air combat maneuvering event with a hard deck of 10,000 feet. Time 3149. Jester's evasive maneuver in the A4 is an aileron roll. Not exactly an effective move in terms of creating the sort of lateral displacement that might defeat an enemy's weapon solution. Time 3208. Goose says, We're going ballistic, Mav, go get them! Which makes no sense because a pilot has no control over a ballistic airplane. At time 13210, the Tomcat does an aileron roll right off the cat, which it wouldn't have the airspeed to do, not to mention that that maneuver would be a serious violation of Case 1 departure procedures. Time 133.08. A random lieutenant reports, Both catapults are broken. We can't launch any aircraft right now, which ignores the fact that modern aircraft carriers have four catapults. And finally, at times 136.54 and 138.02, in both of these cases, the missile magically transforms from an A-7 Sparrow into an AIM-9 Sidewinder in flight. So there you have it. 13 more cringeworthy errors to go along with the 21 cringeworthy errors that we teed up several episodes ago. All right, that'll do it for this episode. As always, please give me those likes and put in your thoughts in the comments section. I very much appreciate those. And also, my debut novel, Punk's War, can be found at usni.org slash press slash books slash punks dash war. The second and third books in the punk trilogy are going to be reissued in a few months. Stay tuned. I will keep you posted. In the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again soon.